welcome back. In what may be one of the first estimates coming from a top global agency, the IMF chief has said artificial intelligence is likely to impact nearly 40% of jobs globally with advanced economies at a higher risk compared to emerging markets and low-income countries, according to an analysis by International Monetary Fund, Front. Front. Um, globally, around 40% jobs are likely to be axed with AI impact, while uh, with the developed countries, it may really be around 60%. AI is likely to even worsen the overall inequality, emphasizing the need for proactive policymaking and increased productivity from high-income individuals and companies that could lead to a wider wealth gap. There are so many layers to what the IMF chief has really spoken. I'm being joined right now by Sandeep Goyal, the founder and CEO for UniCloud, as well as Kush Kishore Subramaniam, financial and economy expert. Well, first, let me just go over to you, Mr. Sandeep Goyal. Uh, doesn't really come as a surprising, but this per perhaps would be one of the first big estimates coming out from uh, a global head. This also comes out as the World Economic Forum is underway in Davos. To say 40% jobs globally are likely to be impacted, developed countries, 60, around 60% likely. What are we really looking at this year? So I think uh, the numbers that has been uh, estimated and quoted by IM chief um, can't be broad-based and we can't paint the uh, whole canvas with a single brush. So which... It is very role specific where I, AI will augment the role and where I, AI will replace the job is different stories altogether, right? So one of the highest coveted or feared roles are content writers or HR executives where uh, they say AI can easily review the CVs better than the HR executives. Now take for example, the um, chat GPT can be used to write your CV and same AI models can be used to review the same CVs, right? What uh, what is the outcome you're going to derive out of that? But what is happening, in my opinion, AI is going to actually push uh, the envelope and ask us or uh, make us think in terms of new way of the working. For example, instead of resumes, you might be moving to a voice-based audio or video pitch from the candidate, which could be analyzed with the help of AI because human can't do it, right? So new avenues will open up. It's not that jobs will be replaced only you will see a lot of jobs getting created because of AI. If you remember, you know, when calculators came in... No, or when the fair. You have in. a very fair point because while high-skilled jobs are likely to be threatened is what the IMF chief has said, she's also marked that it's going to have productivity soar, which means jobs are likely to be created as well. You have a very fair point to that. I'll just get back to you. Let me also get in um, uh, the introductory remark from the other panel as well. Uh, Mr. Kishore Subramanian. If you could just draw light to the fact about how the IMF chief has spoken about widening social inequalities. Now, that is again a huge challenge because we are already in a system where the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, not only just, um, as some would say, in uh, India, but world over for that matter. Tech can be an enabler, but here the initial... Uh, challenges being laid out of how tech could actually be a challenge in this particular case, AI. What does it really mean? Could you break this down that global inequalities may only widen in the initial year? Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that with or without AI, inequality has been constantly widening <clears throat> and it will continue to widen until and unless policymakers across the globe address this not from a perspective of AI, but a perspective of social and economic equality, which has nothing to do with AI, but multiple things that cause this. Point number one, this is very a small time frame for me to even explain how social inequality can be redistributed and reduced. Absolutely. Point number two, as my panelist, fellow panelist, Mr. Sandeep said, AI will bring new jobs. Absolutely. See, 40% is a very, I wouldn't even say it to be an estimate, but it is a guesstimate at this point of time. And I think it will bring out a lot of jobs. For example, today I'm a financial consultant or I run a consultancy firm where we advise individuals and corporate clients. <clears throat> today we have moved to a situation where we have an in-house studio. For everything that we do, we need a cameraman, we need a light man, we need 
an editor, we need software tools, we need to be out on the online space as I'm speaking to you, I'm using Zoom, I'm using cameras, I'm using stands, I'm using a whole lot of equipment to even get connected to you as I sit in Chennai and wherever you are. So imagine AI is going to bring on a lot of other things on place. So it's going to bring in jobs. So if the net top, or as you call, as you can call it, as the set off is going to be there, my guesstimate is that it will not be as bad as people think. As my fellow panelists also said, when calculators came, there was a huge hangama in the world. I remember when computers came into LIC, okay. was India's largest insurance company, they had even a strike. All right. Today, you can't even imagine a world without computers. So I don't think so. the disruption is overestimated. But yes, okay. it, will, it will take out certain type of jobs. It will also bring in certain type of jobs, which are new skills. If you are not going to be with the time, All right. We seem to have lost the line. We'll get back to him as well. But Sandeep Goel, I just have two minutes left. One, one quick, quick question to both of you, Mr. Sandeep Goel. Also a challenge with something like AI, like with any other tech, is also accessibility. And is that where the inequality is likely to rise? Because not everybody from every strata, from every background is going to have access to AI tech, however skilled they might be, however much potential they may have. The accessibility to a tech like this, if you look across India itself, forget about globally. Globally is a huge uh, data to really look at. But even in India, accessibility is huge. And would that then, you know, drive the inequality gap further? So uh, let's break this into two pieces. I think it's a valid question that you put up here. But if you look at the a business adopting AI technology from productivity or usage perspective, SMEs will be left out, of course, because today in the age of digital or computerization, they still lag behind uh, as compared to larger companies or, you know, MCs or Indian conglomerates, right? Uh, or maybe MSME uh, is adopting it. Uh, so similarly, when it comes to the AI use cases, cost becomes a major factor and, uh, you know, SMEs will be left behind because of the cost factor there. But now coming to the user perspective, when smartphones came in, who guessed that uh, half a billion you know, people in India would be using smartphones there, right? So today our smartphones are already using AI. So uh, it is, it'll be wrong to say the access from a user perspective will be limited because uh, AI technology solutions are being built by companies so that consumers can consume. Then only the era will change, right? So in my opinion, the access to users will be there, but the problem would be the knowledge and ability Absolutely. to upskill across the board. That's where the inequality will be, uh, you know, drafted on. So it will require uh, more technical education, right? So the education system in India, okay. exposure to those technologies so that students from all uh, you know, uh, sections of the economies are able to access and upgrade themselves. That's what will create the difference. Okay. All right, just the last question, and I'm afraid I'll have to tell you to wrap really soon on this, Mr. Kishore Subramaniam. Can there be a safety net? something that the IMF chief, chief has visualized. Yeah, on a lighter note, more than artificial intelligence, I'm worried about natural stupidity. That's a bigger problem, but let me be very, very clear about the fact of the matter that there are solutions which are coming up which will create new jobs. The numbers are a guesstimate at this point of time. India will cope up and many emerging markets will cope up. Yes, the use of technology to the lower strata who do not have smartphones or do not have understanding of the language English, will also be solved with multiple things coming up in AI with language and stuff. I think it's a long, long process by which we are looking at robotic life and AI literally replacing human beings. In my estimate, it's not going to happen. Thank anytime. you very much. Right, thank you very much, Sandeep Goyal, as well as Kishore Subramaniam. You've joined us with some very important perspectives to try and understand what IMF chief sentence could mean, of course, in a very short time. Thank you very much for joining us. Time for a short break. On the other side, we'll join you with all the latest.